good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has given us. Time for worship. Amen. God is a good God. And He's worthy to be praised. Do I have any witnesses in here today? That God is in the blessing business. Let us uh, share together our foundational scripture. Then Samuel took a stone, set it up between Mitzvah and Shem, and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Amen. Amen. This time we have the hands about the octave. They will lead us in our devotional period at this time. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, Ebenezer. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Deep, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. They love in the house of the Lord, y'all. Amen. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's peace in the house of the Lord. Amen. So we just want to thank you guys. We're so glad and so happy to be back home. Amen. It's good to go away, but it's always better to come back home. Amen. 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 So we thank you for your prayers. Uh, we bring greetings from our son, uh, Fred Jr., there in New Orleans, and his wife uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, and all the family down there on the Gulf Coast. And uh, we just thank God we're able to go and spend a little time with family. Amen. 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 And so it's just so good to be able to go and to be able to come back, amen, with the protection of the Lord. Amen. So we thank you, God, this morning for helping us and being with us all the way. Amen. amen. Because, you know, it's the same God. They used to always say, God, it's the same God here yes, in, in Colorado, that there is in Louisiana and Mississippi. Amen. amen. In Africa and China and Russia. It's the same God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we still always remember to give him all the thanks and all the praise, no matter where we are. Amen. So we're just so thankful and grateful that he allowed us to go and to come back. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Let's sing this little song. Jesus is on the main line, telling you what you want. Yeah.
in the midnight hour, early in the morning, amen, amen, when you ain't feeling too good and things ain't working out so good, you can just call him up, amen, just call him up, you know, that's how good, that's how good father is, you can just call him up anytime. Amen. I'm having some problems, Daddy. So what's something's going on? Call us up anytime you want. Amen. Amen. Tell him what you want. Amen. Amen. All right, now I'm going to get those scriptures this morning. So I guess they're ready to get together right now. Amen. You got one right here? Hey. Praise the Lord. See, that's how a good team works together, dog. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon each and every one of you. Give you his peace is our prayer. Amen. Amen. We always remember and never forget that faith is the key that unlocks the door. Amen. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes. Amen. Before we close out, the Holy Spirit was reminding me. Yes. We went away and had a beautiful trip. Yeah. But upon arrival, we had a near accident yeah. on the highways of Louisiana. Flying up the highway, yeah. a truck crossways the highway. We don't know what he was doing. Another car hit their brakes just short of hitting him. We hit our brakes just short of hitting both of them. And the car behind us stopped just short of hitting us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deacon was driving and said, What is going on? I said, I just said amen from a prayer amen. for safe travel. Amen. And not just us, Lord. I said,
for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. That's saying, to the glory of God, this great hymn of the church. Caldwell, and, and, and I want to make it clear that I know 
full well that Dr. Williamson can do more than just read the scripture every Sunday. I want y'all to know that. But I like the way she does it so well. I mean, she preaches before I get up to preach. Amen. And the scriptures come alive. And that's what we want to happen. And so I'm going to have her do something else eventually. Amen. But I love, I love uh, how she handles the reading of the word. Amen. And so, Reverend Williamson, scripture, and Caldwell, the prayer, then we'll be back. Amen. reading is coming from Daniel the third chapter the 10th through the 16th verses and before I read it I want you to know how Nebuchadnezzar how he had a lot of pride a lot of self centeredness and that's what this scripture is about and it reads thou O king has made a decree that every man shall, shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and de, de, decimal, decimal, I'm sorry, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden idol. And whoso falleth not down and worship that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Yeah. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Yeah. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. Yeah. They serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not thy serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready, at that t- at what time ye shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music. You shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. You may be seated. Y'all be careful of pride and self-centeredness. We all have it. Let's be careful. Lead us not into temptation. 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Father God, we just come before you. First of all, give it thanks to you, Father God. Give it thanks to you for you being God and being God all by yourself, Father. Give it thanks to you for you being a man of your word, Father God, knowing that your word should never come back void, Father God. Knowing that your word is a foundation in which we can build a life upon us, Father God. Knowing that your word, Father God, shall establish us in you, Father God. Knowing that your word, Father God, will raise us up, Father God, that we may bring about glory to your name, Father God. As you sit high upon that throne and you look down low, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the blood that your son shed upon that cross, that we may have life and have a life of abundance, Father God. We thank you for his obedience to your word, Father God, for we know that he did not have to get on that cross, but he chose to get up on that cross, Father God, for the love that he had for all of us, Father God. Even those that did not love him, Father God, he sacrificed his life for those as well, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for his obedience, Father. We thank you, Father God, on this day that you have allowed us to wake up to, Father God, a day which was not promised to us, Father God, but one that which you saw fit that we should be a part of, Father God, that we are able to lift you up and to point you out for the world to see, Father God, the glory and the love that you have for us all. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for all that you do. If we had 10,000 tongues, Father God, they can all see you one. It would not be enough, Father God. But we're going to continue to strive toward the hard mark of the calling of God in Christ Jesus, Father God. That we may lift you up and point you out, Father God. That we may be all that we can be in you, Father God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We thank you for the things that you have given unto us, Father God. But we know that all that we have comes from you. We know these things, Father God. We thank you, Father, for the coming of our homes. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to go into our refrigerators and be able to get what we desire to get. We thank you, Father God, for the clothes that we are able to put on to our backs, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the money that we are able to spend, Father God. But we know that it all comes from you. We thank you. We praise your holy name, Father God. We set you in that place upon high when you look down and bless us, Lord. We pray this morning, Father God, for the lonely, the confused, the lost, the deceived, Father God. We pray for the incarcerated. We pray for those, Father God, who are homeless, Father God. We pray for those who do not know you in the parts of their sins, Father God. We ask, Father God, that someone may go to them and to tell them who you are. Maybe ask, what must they do to be saved, Father God? But we know that you do not know for none of us to be lost in this world of sin, Father God. And we lift you up. And we thank you. We praise you, Father God. And we desire to serve you justly, righteously, and boldly, Father God. For your word tells us, Father God, that you will never leave nor forsake us. We, your word tells us, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we know that through Jesus Christ, we can do all things, Father God. For he gives us strength, Father God. And he has told us, Father God, what you would do. And we thank you for all these things. In the name of your only begotten Son, your pure, the same one, we pray and give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Queenson, for the reading of the scripture and Dr. Caldwell delivering that powerful prayer. Amen. Uh, today I forgot uh, last Sunday, so I want to be sure that one of the first things I do uh, at this moment is to acknowledge all of the June birthdays. And so if you're celebrating your birthday in the month of June, stand that we might acknowledge you at this time. Kehlani's birthday, third birthday, was yesterday. Amen. So they say you got a happy birthday. Uh, 
deep what it means to announce that Sister Katrina Suttle, we know that Sister Lamerle's daughter, was in a serious car accident and she's in the hospital. And so we want to keep her uh, in our prayer. Certainly we also want to keep uh, Reverend Jerry Rose and her family in prayer. Her brother, C, had passed away. Uh, and uh, remember I told you just last week I had spoken with him. He was, had surgery, was in rehab, doing fine. But you know, a lot of time that's when the Lord take you when you're doing fine. Amen. So he is certainly resting in the arms of God, but we're praying for uh, his family, certainly we're praying for his children, amen, and praying for all of his siblings. Uh, we also are praying for Deacon Amos Brown, who is suffering from a bronchitis, uh, so I ask that you would keep him in prayer. Uh, we're praying for Sister Marie Pope, we're still dealing with some health challenges. We're glad to see uh, Sister Evelyn McGregor uh, in worship today. I also want you to pray for Brother Wyland Gidry, that's my wife's brother. As you know, the Gidry family adopted him when he was little, but uh, this week his birth mother passed away. And so let us pray for Wyland and the entire Chapman family. He's a part, my brother-in-law is kin to all those Chapmans, even Dr. Chapman that preaches all over the country. He's kin to them, and so let's pray for all of them. Uh, we're also praying for Brother Adolphus Ladd, my uncle, his brother passed away, and will be funeralized in the next coming, upcoming days. Uh, we're praying for Reverend Alicia Hill, she is fine, uh, her job played out, and so the new job that they gave her uh, has her working on Sundays, that's why she's not here. And the most interesting thing is that folk who don't go to church, they never have to work on Sunday. Folk who want to come to church get scheduled to work on Sunday. That's just how the devil works. But I told you, hold on, the Lord don't change your schedule after a while. Amen. But that's the way that works. And so uh, we're certainly glad to have uh, Deacon and Deacon Ness Hutton all back with us. We thank God uh, that God kept them uh, safe and that God was a hedge of protection around them. Amen as they travel these dangerous uh, highways. Uh, so our choir is coming. We thank God for our ministerial staff. We thank God for our choir, for our musicians, for our director, uh, for our ushers, for our deacon, our deaconess, and our audio and video uh, ministry. And certainly we thank God for our visitors, uh, members of Greater Faith, Pastor Pruitt. We thank God for all of you. Uh, we also thank God for those of you who are worshiping virtually. We praise God for you as well. And I know I did say, and I did not forget that I said it was casual Sunday for giving me the blues because I can have on a suit. Uh, but it's still casual dress. I have somewhere to go after church. Well, I have another service to go to. So I didn't want to show up over there casual. Amen. I want to look like more usually looks when he shows up somewhere. Amen. And so it is casual, and the brother's giving me the blues. Pastor, you making us feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's still casual dress. I'm going to show you what casual is next Sunday. Uh, so the choir is coming, and they will lead us, uh, or they will share with us their selections at this time. Amen. <laughs>
Yes, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Aren't you glad he knows how to fix it? Washington and her leadership of our music ministry. Amen. Uh, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 verses 17 and 18. Dr. Williamson read uh, verses 10 through 16. So I'm going to pick up where she left off. Uh, Daniel chapter 3 verses 17 and 18. If it be so. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O King. But if he doesn't do it, be it known unto you, O King Nebuchadnezzar, that we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship any golden image that you have set up. That's some kind of faith. That's unwavering faith. And so I want to talk about today why back down when God is backing you up. Why back down when God is backing you up. Uh, what do you do? When you ask for something and get no for an answer. One of the most frustrating moments in life is to ask for something and get no for an answer. Our children ask uh, us for a whole lot of stuff. And a whole lot of times they get no for an answer. Uh, I don't care how well... I love Kaylani. She can't have no ice cream before she eats her vegetables. She gets no for an answer. If your wife or your husband asks you for something and, and they tell you no, how does that make you feel? Now remember the way we respond when things don't go our way reveals a side of our character that is rarely seen. Responses, you know, often vary from anger, screaming, cussing, yelling, temper tantrums, pouting, vengeful acts, and many other troubling responses. I know, I know everybody sitting in here, y'all haven't cussed in a long time. I know that. There are some who ask for blessings, but always expect to get a yes. And never expect for God to say no. Consider the boy who constantly disobeyed his mother. And repeatedly he angered his mother to the point that one day he literally got on her nerves. Finally the mother told the son that he needed to go to his room and talk to God about his behavior. After a while, the mother heard the son praying to the Lord, and she walked away with a smile on her face. But after an hour, the son walked out of his room and told his mother that he had just finished talking to God in prayer. 
His mother said, good, if you ask God to help you to not misbehave, God will help you. He said, Mama, I didn't ask God to help me not mis to help me not misbehave. I told him to help you to deal with my misbehavior. God always answers prayer. But his answer may not always be yes. Sometimes his answer is no. As believers, our challenge is to trust God and be glad regardless of his answer. When the Lord tells us no, that's when Satan will trick us into thinking that God does not care about us. That's when some of us back down or we give up all together. But I'm going back to the question I asked you a few minutes ago. Why back down when God is backing us up? We want to go through our entire lives without any problems. But if not, we, we want to be free from sickness. But if not, we want to be financially secure. But if not... We want to be successful in our relationships, but if not, we want to be winners and enjoy the victory, but if not, what if God doesn't say yes? What if he says no? If God says no, will you back down or will you keep on serving the Lord with all your heart? What we have learned about life is the value of trusting in the Lord. With the understanding that he will work it out if we let him. Yeah. We would like to go all the way uh, without any problems. But if not, I stop by to tell you, God it is still good. Yeah. Well, our text for today focuses on three believers who acknowledge the permissive will of God. The power of God and their acceptance of his will. The king of Babylon, as you know, conquered all of the region of Judah and carried most of the uh, educated, smart folk from that society back to Babylon. He began a three-year educational program to retrain these Jews so that they would accept the Chaldean attitude and the Chaldean custom. Among these four men were Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. The four men were strong believers in the wonder, wonder power of God. They prayed regularly and even refused the king's efforts to re-educate them to the Chaldean lifestyle. Daniel, remember, he interpreted a dream for the king. And in so doing, Daniel was given the opportunity to serve as a prime minister or leader of governors in the land. It was a land, though. It was a position that he turned down. However, he remembered similar, he recommended similar positions for his three homeboys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As foreigners and powerful political leaders in the land, the three young men and even Daniel himself were often the subject of efforts to oust them from power. In other words, folk all around were jealous of these four men. They were envious of that position. God was raising them up and there was some folk trying to tear them down. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but every time God starts blessing, the devil starts messing. God had lifted these four brothers up with powerful positions. And there were some folk around who didn't like it. There were some folk around that wanted to cause them trouble. There, there were some folk around that wanted to get them in trouble with King Nebuchadnezzar. On such a move came when the king erected a statue of himself. 
and sent out a decree that said when certain music uh, was played that everyone should bow down and worship this golden image. Those who refused to do so would be punished by being cast into a fiery furnace the same day. The king's Chaldean advisors made certain that the resistance of these three men were noted. In other words, there were, they were some tattletales. They couldn't wait to go and tell the king on the three Hebrew boys. And the interesting thing about these folk that went to tell, they didn't have no high position, but they were astrologers. And they were astrologers. They, they wanted to predict a happier future for the king. In other words, they were trying to get in good with the king by telling him some good news. But the three Hebrew boys wasn't going to lie to the king. They were going to tell the king, if you don't serve the Lord, brother, you're going to be in trouble. And so the king told the folk, look here, when you hear the music, y'all need to bow down and worship this golden image. And whoever doesn't do so will be punished severely. And understand, the king addressed them by asking them after they refused to bow down, said, look fellows, did you all understand the rules? Did you all understand what I said? I said, Everybody who did not bow down was going to be severely punished. They said, yeah, we, we heard what you said the first time. They said, well, don't you understand that, that if you don't obey my order, you are going to be punished. And essentially what they said, yeah, man, we heard you the first time. But guess what? They were still refused to obey that order. And I want to know when we are faced with the uh, punishment of the world, will we serve God anyhow? That's the question. These Hebrew boys, they refused to back down. And the, the scripture says that the king got an attitude. No, I think that was my word, but that, I think the scripture said it nicely, but 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 really he got an attitude. Uh, and, and, and he got an attitude and he reiterated the fact that uh, because they were disobedient, they would uh, be punished. Uh, but they did not bow down, nor did they worship that golden image. And y'all know what happened. They got thrown into the fiery furnace. He said, now, now, then, 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 he, then he tried to throw a rock at them. He said, I'm going to throw y'all behind in the furnace. And I want to know who is this God that's going to deliver you out of my hand. Oh boy, he not only was he didn't get an attitude, he went crazy for a minute. Trying to question God's power. And that's what the devil will do. The devil thinks that he has as much power as God. But I stop by to tell you the devil is a liar. And the truth ain't in it. So when he saw that the Hebrew boy is not going to bow down. He said, who is your God that's going to deliver you all out of my hand? And I love the way these Hebrew boys answered the king. Hebrew boys made three affirmations that God may permit it to be so, that he was able to deliver them, and that even if God chose not to deliver them, they still had no plans to disobey him. So in other words, what they were saying is God is backing us up. So we don't have to back down. Y'all know what happened. The king ordered the furnace to be prepared. But this time that it should be prepared seven times hotter than, it, than usual. The three young men were thrown into the furnace. But they were not burned by the fire. 
The Bible says that their hair and their clothes didn't even smell like smoke when they came out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. As the people waited for them to scream bloody murder, they didn't hear nothing coming from the furnace. And so the king got inquisitive. He said, now I know them boys ought to be hollering by now. Y'all open that window, y'all hush that window, and let me see what's going on in that furnace. King stood looking in the furnace. Them three Hebrew boys were sitting there chilling. It was hot in there, but they were chilling. And then the king kept on looking and said, uh-uh. He said, wait, 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 hold, 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 hold. Say, didn't I throw three men in there? His staff member said, yeah, king, you sure did. He said, well, 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 look at here and see what I see. I see a fourth man in there walking around. And that fourth man looks like the father of the living God. Y'all pray with me. Jesus is always with you. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus will be with you. So then why back down when God is backing you up? Hebrew boys, by their example, gives us three attitudes of what we ought to do when we face the fires of life. And so then my first point is why back down when God is backing you up? If it be so, so be it. If it be so, so be it. Unlike many of the biblical leaders of the past who have been given a promise of deliverance from God, the Hebrew boys had never received prior reassurances that they would be delivered. In other words, God never promised them that he was going to deliver them from the fire service, but they trusted God in hand. You remember when David went up uh, against Goliath? He said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into thine hand. And you remember Joshua, Moses, Elijah, and many others acted in great faith because God had already promised deliverance. But these three, three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, I mean a friend to go, they had not received any promises that God would deliver them from this trouble. But they relied on the nature of their relationship with God. In other words, they knew that God had blessed them in the past and He was going to bless them right now. They knew that God had delivered them yesterday and God was going to deliver them today. They knew, they knew that he would always do what was best for them. And he would never abandon them. There are many situations that we all face every day. God has never delivered a promise uh, that we would never have trouble. He didn't promise us that we wouldn't have difficult times. He wouldn't, didn't promise us that we wouldn't have to deal with sickness every now and then. But what he did promise us, that he would be with us always, even until the end of the world. Often, like the Hebrew boys, we face difficulties without knowing if we will be delivered from them or not. We are similar to these three men in that we too are so comfortable with our relationship with God to the point that we know and understand that God is always directing the outcome of our situation. Jesus called this relationship abiding in Him. 
if we abide in him and his word abides in us, then why back down when God is backing us up? In the text, the words, if it be so, uh-huh. seem to say if it is if it's God's will that this difficulty confronts me, yeah. then so be it. Yeah. You see, we are comfortable because we are supported in his word. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even when we have not been promised deliverance, we are comfortable because we remember what the psalmist said when he said, God will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. And the end of that thing by saying, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen mine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Why back down when God is backing us up? My second point is we serve an able God. See, the king wanted to know who was this God of the Hebrew boys that they would think him so powerful that he could deliver them out of his hand. Yeah, there, there were guards all around, all of the people of the, the, the government officials, they were all around, they were all at the king's disposal. And so the prospect of deliverance from the king's hands were non-existent yeah, yeah. for folk who don't know God. Yeah, and then after being put in a fiery furnace, being heated seven times hotter than usual, guess what? You sure wouldn't get out of that yeah. without the help of God. Yeah. But despite these impossible situations, these Hebrew boys confirmed their belief that our God is able to deliver us. Like the Hebrew boys, God wants us to remain confident in His power. Yes, we don't have to back down when we experience setbacks. We don't have to back down when we experience illness. We don't have to back down when joy forgets our address. We don't have to back down when trouble is pressing in on us. We don't have to back down because God is backing us up. Often we are faced with forces outside of ourselves that are overwhelming. And we begin to believe or Satan will trick us into believing that God cannot deliver us. Yes, Yet the Hebrew boys resolve, look, our God is able. We, we don't know why y'all tripping up in here, up in here, up in here. But the God whom we serve, he's able. Even the power of the government is no match for God. The power of these crooked police is no match for God. The power of the Donald Trumps of society are no match for God. That's what King Ahab found out when the state-controlled prophets of Baal were challenged on Mount Carmel. There Ahab learned that the state's 400 prophets could not stand against the simple prayer of one man backed up by the power of Almighty God. I stop by to tell you, Ebenezer, that no matter what your situation is, God is able. No matter how bad it looks, I stop by to tell you, God is able. No matter how frustrating the moment may be, God is able. No matter how hot the fire, God is able. I don't know what the doctor told you, but I do know God is able. He's an able God. No 
matter how much folk lie on us and gossip about us, I stop by to tell you God is able. So why back down when God is backing you up? The Hebrew boys were firm in their resolve to obey and trust God no matter what. They did not let their situation weaken their faith. They did not back down just because their situation seemed hopeless. They knew that they had a relationship to God. They knew that he had the power to deliver them. And they knew that even if he chose not to deliver, they resolved to be firm in their faith. This attitude of the Hebrew boys challenges each of us to adopt a similar attitude of faith. It is an attitude that says even if God does not act in the way I want him to act, I will remain firm in my commitment to him. And that was the attitude that Job had. Job lost much of his family his health, and all of his property in a series of events. Yet Job would not back down. He decided that despite what he was going through in his life, he would remain faithful to God. And when challenged by his crazy wife, who told him, man, you ought to just cuss God and die, Job still remained faithful to God. His body was covered with sores, but he remained faithful to God. He had to bury all of his children, but he remained faithful to God. He had to file bankruptcy, y'all, but he remained faithful to God. He remained faithful. And it would have been easy for him just to sit around and throw a pity party. And would go on and curse God and die. That would have been the easy part. But instead of giving up, instead of backing down, instead of not trusting in God, I heard Job said, naked, I came from my mother's womb and naked, I will return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why back down when the Lord is backing you up? Now, look, this means that even in difficult times, we will not stop worshiping God. Even when we don't feel like it, we will not stop praising God. Even when things are at their worst, we will not stop having a gratitude toward God for His goodness and His mercy towards us. Satan will never be able to tempt us to stop serving the Lord. He'll never be able to get us to turn our backs on God. Not if we're going to be like the Hebrew boy. And when we have failed, and well, we, we, we won't blame God, but we will continue to hold to His unchanging hand. Yes, I know. I'm like most folk. want to be won't have the greatest health. Yes, yes. But you know what? But if not, God is still good. We want to have a whole lot of money in the bank. But if not, God is still good. We, we want to be free of people gossiping about us and lying on us. But if not, God is still good. We want to be free from the attacks of the enemy. And we want to be free from the troubles of this world. But if not, God is still good. And since he's still good, why back down when he's backing you up? Finally, finally, brothers and sisters, we should make it up in our minds. That we will not. We shall not. We bet not. Back down. Because the Lord is blessing us. 
the Lord is strengthening us. And the Lord is keeping us. So I have company in here today. The Lord is backing us up. Doesn't matter what comes our way. The Lord will do what's best for us. We know this because His Word reminds us that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. That means that even a bad thing, God can turn it into a good thing if we trust in Him. That means I came by to tell you some good stuff happens when God is backing you up. Failure turns into success when God is backing you up. Defeat turns into victory when God is backing you up. Sadness turns into gladness when God is backing you up. Sorrow turns into joy when God is backing you up. Hatred turns into love when God is backing you up. When he was led from courtroom to courtroom, Jesus was backing us up. When they lied from him, he was backing us up. When they pissed him in the side, he was backing us up. When they put him in that power of tongue, he was backing us up. But when they got up around that same moment, with all the power in his hand, he was backing us up. Backing us up. Backing us up. Backing you up. Sickness will show up. But God is backing you up. You're going to fall sometimes. But God is backing you up. Don't back down, y'all. Don't back down. Because God is backing you up. The doors of the church open. Doors open. You're here today. Don't ever forget that God is backing you up. He's willing, He's able to help you. He'll carry you through. All you gotta do is trust Him. Lean on Him. And watch Him work it out for you. Thank you.
time, I'm going to have our altar call and sister in prayer, Pastor Paul Rose, and then I'll worship through giving my Reverend Paul Rose the third day. Amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we come together, you know, the scripture says, where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he'll be. He's here right now. Let us go to the throne of grace. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come giving you all praise, all honor, and all glory. Father, we just want to thank you, hallelujah, for another day of life to come and worship you, Father. When the sun came up this morning, our eyes opened wide, hallelujah, for another day to worship and give praise unto you. Father, touch all the families that are in bereavement, Father. Touch them right now and let the comforter come and give them comfort, Father, as they know not what to do, but you are what you want them to do. Father, touch all the ones that are in the, the nursing home. Touch them in the jail. Touch them in the hospital, Father. Anoint the hands that are preparing for them. Father, all that are working over them. Father, we just give you praise. Hallelujah. We ask that you open our eyes that we might see and our ears that we might hear. Thus saith the Lord. Father, we just give you all praise because we know that you are back in the sun. Oh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. 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 Can we get an amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. amen. All the time. Guess what, y'all? It's offer time. Guess what? It's offer time, y'all. Now it's time for us to give back this ten little portion that we are able to give back to what God has given us today. The scripture for today comes from Malachi chapter three, verse eight. And it reads, verse ten, verse ten. And it reads, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my home. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough for you to receive. Amen. 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 Yes, as we come forward at this time.
one need to cross the path. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Let us bow our heads. Let us bow our heads. Let's bow our heads.